Haydn, Gypsy Dance, and we have the left hand that does this. Starts in D minor, ends in D major. The hardest part is the last line, so I'll look at it real quick first. Here it is. For some reason, it stutters. Okay, so we have the last chord here, but before it we have this chord. Because the thumb has to play the C sharp, I suggest playing white keys like this, not like this. So like this, not like this. This way, if you get used to this idea of playing inside the keyboards, playing the last line will be easy, basically. As opposed to... Right, that sudden... Uh, stutter for the C sharp chord. But other than that, uh, everything is straightforward, so let's go back up to where we were. In the left hand, there's not much going on except for that change to F sharp in the end of the line. So I would suggest instantly shift into F sharp right here. So if I spell it out, right here is where I want to make that happen. If I don't do it there, there's a chance that I do this, get to the last measure and I'm like, oh, I have to be here. It's going to create rhythmic stutter, kind of break up of flow. If instead I practice with having my third finger on F sharp, all the time except for the beginning of this line then I'll have a good habit to that end let's start at the very end so I have this uh, final measure which I'll kind of highlight in yellow and pretty straightforward I did make one change so instead of playing three three I'm just going to use one it's already there so no reason to change it uh, in the meantime, the left hand just does its thing. And you think, okay, easy measure, wh why the big deal? Well, the big deal is that this happens, right? You have that restart of the whole phrase all the way from the middle of the keyboard in the right hand. And so the most important thing to practice is the leap. There's a small change in the left hand from F sharp back to F. But the most important thing is, of course, getting that right hand down there. And so to do that, you have to practice the leap. The leap would be something like holding the D with the red highlight and you're like, Ugh. okay, so we'll just move it a little bit. I'm here and then I do the red highlight and I freeze because that motion has to be basically automated. hit my F sharp there accidentally. Right, that's the leap. And again, there's nothing musical about it. It's just a physical motion, a ballet of the arms, of the fingers, which has to be flawless for this to sound smooth. Right, so then once you've mastered the leap, let's play the notes. Uh, like the last note is just that. Okay, so you hit it, you jump, big deal. But the jump has to happen. Then maybe let's actually play the left hand with the right hand and then remember to also make the move in the left hand. Not sure how long to hold these quarter note chords. Probably, you know, traditional classical style, half of its length so off on off on off right so down up down up and so as you go up you move that third finger in the left hand as you see that little uh, highlight squiggle from F sharp to F okay so let's do it together so let's say I'm right here I am on beat 2 I just played the, the chord I just played that first eighth note in the right hand I'm kind of holding them and now I have to do this. Ooh, that was difficult. Like all I have to do is move the third finger from here to here, jump from here to there, but 
in the heat of the moment when everything is happening, it's very easy to lose your cool and start to fumble. So you really have to practice these moments. Right. So until that becomes more second nature. Okay. So let's say we've established this. Then, of course, the, the rest of the measure is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, just adding a couple of notes from the 16th group, fourth finger. Right, as long as I'm always ending up in this position, ready to start measure five with fresh energy, uh, I'm good. Right, so I'm always checking that very specific position. Notice I'm, I have fingers one and three on the same key, but also my finger two is not here. If I'm if I do that kind of prep, I cannot press the C sharp. I'll have to kind of you know lurch forward with my arm and it just becomes very uncomfortable so as i leave i'm always making sure my second finger is on that c sharp right away so right and so i'm checking that i've got f prepared i've got um c sharp here with finger two fingers one and three on the d so that's once that's been established i'm good let's look at the previous measure a little bit See if I can. There it is. A little sluggish on the high pad for some reason. Uh, so, pretty straightforward. My right hand doesn't have to do much. Uh, I'm sorry, my left hand doesn't have to do much. My right hand has to do a little more. But the nice thing about the left hand is it's in position. I don't have to worry about any finger motions because I'm already on F sharp. But in the right hand, let's see. All good until that very last moment because here is that issue. As I come up to the D, I don't want to have thumb hanging out on A. I want it to pull in to be over D. So as I'm playing the C sharp, last note of that measure, boom, right? And so as I go over to D, I want to stop right here and check my position, which is that. Right, that's D, that's me uh, preparing the other notes, but I'm coming out of C-sharp here, so that's the move I have to make. I'm C-sharp, D, C-sharp, D, and of course if I'm doing it with the left hand, I'm doing this. Right, so again, I'm isolating one position transition, uh, starting to rhyme, and if I nail it, everything starts to flow. If I don't, it'll probably sound like this. Right, and so we had a smooth ride through the third measure, we had a smooth ride through the fourth measure, but in between we had that stutter. And we don't want that, so two things to practice. One is as you leave A, thumb gets pulled in. As you play the thumb, you reposition. So if I were to circle something, I would probably circle that moment. And that's the only thing I would practice. There is no point to practice the entire piece. Most of it is just played automatically, right? You put the fingers down and you start playing. You know, whatever the fingers are, whatever the notes are. But every time there is a position transition, you need to do those motions. You need to practice them until they become automatic. And that's where mastering these kinds of pieces is on the one hand easy because you're not struggling with large leaps. It's, it's all straightforward, but little adjustments are so important for the piece uh, to flow nicely. So yeah, one more time, the red circle, I'll start on the C sharp. All right, so I'll kind of back up with my red line showing where I'm starting from C sharp and then boom and then my you know blue line is kind of the stopping point. Okay, as, as long as I can make sure this position is working I'm good. Let's now back up to here. So now I'm already wanting to train my fingers to do that. Right, the thumb not here, here. As long as I'm doing that follow up, now maybe a little faster. Okay, I'm good. 
finally I'm holding the A with my thumb and then as soon as I let go and it pulls in and that's all I have to do those four notes with all the right kind of bendings of the thumb adjustments of the other fingers so once I've, I'm done with that part I don't need to do anything else let's look at the previous measure the green highlight um, so so in the left hand we have that important moment with F sharp that right from F natural I have to reposition to F sharp so that's one thing in the right hand I'm going to start the measure already with three and one making that kind of ring shape sorry I always show it off the camera so this ring shape so that when I go down on A my uh, second finger is on G sharp the black key below and then that's what happens I'm going to put in a little position kind of box if you can see it maybe it's a little easier if I do that okay so that's the moment where this readjustment has to happen but then once that readjustment has happened and I've done my position transition I'm set until basically that yellow highlight right so that's the nice thing once you do it right it solves so many other problems so there's that box and that's all I have to practice and also the left hand so uh, past the box that C sharp I'm gonna put I don't know let's make a purple stopping point so that's where the stopping point occurs C sharp all the other fingers are in place I don't need to go on I know I can play the other notes so let's not practice that okay finally um, let's choose a starting point maybe use this red line red thing line so a finger one but we're in this position aren't we coming out of this we're still going to be here and so I need to make that transition on this a right where the red line occurs now if I move the red line and pretend I've already played A then I might argue yeah I'm already in this position that you see with the red box but before I play it I will be in this position and so let's do that let's imagine we're on G sharp we're still holding the left hand yeah uh, I'm sorry I'm playing G sharp with finger Ooh, I, I realized I made a big uh, mistake uh, a few minutes ago I said prepare fingers one and three on a of course I should have said one and four on a and finger three is the one that's on G sharp if we go with with this fingering so let's do that let's fix fix my mistake right so I'm holding the G sharp with three my thumb is already on A I'm kind of squeezed with my right hand where fourth is still on A but as I come out of the G sharp you know I've got this F uh, held down with my finger three in the left hand right it's a lot going on right even if I don't go on to C sharp that's the move I have to make if I go to C sharp I'm already in position right I'm just making sure that I'm playing all the notes and I'm making the transitions correctly right so just those three notes two three notes is where it all happens if I if I master it from the out you know from the get-go if I don't leave it to chance I won't have a problem with this passage if I kind of hope I get to the right notes and maybe I do maybe I don't but more, more importantly it won't be so how shall we say it uh, directed it won't be so consciously practiced then chances are I'm not 
training accuracy in my fingers as much as I could be trained in it. So, one more time. Right, so I'm checking two things, that readjustment of my position in the right hand and making sure that finger three comes up to F sharp. Okay, so let's go back to the first measure. Let's make it, I don't know, orange. Last note of that measure is three. And coming into four there on, on the downbeat of the green measure. And as soon as I do that, I have to pull in. So, there's another box that we're going to introduce right on that A. We didn't have to practice it when we were just playing the green measure because we were starting out with this compressed hand. But coming into it, we're going to have to make that conscious adjustment, that squeeze. Right? Where you know, maybe my finger one was on F, right? My finger three is on G. And now as I go into the green measure, boom. Maybe, what shall I do? Let's delete the purple here. Whoops. And I'll put a stopping point with this color. Okay, so if I'm stopping on A, Oops. That's what I want to feel, that shape. So coming out of that, let's maybe use another red line. Right on G. No, let's do it with the left hand. Alright, so again, all I'm focusing on is that red box, that position change. Okay, once I feel good, let's move the red line, the starting line, so to speak, to here. So I've got F down, and I've got G ready with three, A ready with four, and then I'm following through. Oops. I really want to freeze. I really want to freeze right there. And the reason I want to freeze is I want to check that squeeze in my right hand. Let's go before that. It's going to be two, isn't it? On E. But I still can position all my other fingers. So, starting at E, I am in this new position. On two, th two on E, then one, three, four. One, three, four. And as I play four, I squeeze my right hand. So, that's probably the. the segment I would practice in this measure, connecting into measure two. Before it, I might want to practice a little more because there are a couple of small position adjustments, right? So as I come into F, so I'm going to keep moving this. Get rid of that stopping point. I want to stop here now. I always want to practice in small, easy to digest chunks. Let's say I'm holding that E with F, with, with finger two, yeah? And so as I'm holding that E, and I'm ready to strike the second beat, both hands, I want to practice this. So pulling in of that thumb, in fact, I could even pull it in as I'm holding the E, right? So as I'm holding the E, I can already have the thumb tucked underneath. Right, and there's nothing really that I need to do. But maybe the stopping point where I showed it is bad because I'm not actually forcing myself to practice this part. And this part is yet another little position adjustment box where as I come out, let, let's start on F, let's start on this chord. Thumb is tucked underneath. I'm about to play two where that box is shown. And I'm going to stop because 
that, right? That adjustment of position is what we need to practice. Okay, now as we go back up and like, let's start on E here, holding it with two, thumb is already tucked underneath. Right, so I've played e, F, E, and I've come back to where I was. I played E, I started on E with two, I played F with three, I came back to E with two, where you see the stop in line, and I need to to do something different because I can no longer hold 3 on F. 3 has to shift to G. So holding the E, F, and then as I play that E with the stopper and the position changer, that has to happen, right? Pretty, in some sense, measure 1 is the busiest. It doesn't have any big leaps like measure four does, but it does have these kind of nudely little moments where the fingers have to position themselves just right. So I would really kind of micromanage this whole practice process until you know what's going on. All right, so the stopping point, that thick line, kind of, I don't know what color it is, sort of dark red. Um, I'm doing that, I'm holding the E with finger two, I've got other fingers all ready to go. Before that, I've got the F. Thumb is already on F as well. You know, I'm holding the left hand and then I'm getting to the E and I'm stopping. Then I go back to where that thin red line is. I'm holding the E. Thumb is already tucked underneath. It's on F. All I have to do is play F with the left hand and then stop on E. When I stop on E, of course, I have to make sure my fingers have jumped. So a lot of little adjustments that have to take place. Okay, I think I got it. Let's back up to D. Whoops. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm not going to hold the left hand because, as discussed, we're going to go on, off. So by this point, my left hand is not holding that chord. All I'm doing is starting on D and I'm thinking E, F, E, E, F, E. And I'm probably still going to hold the uh, left hand chord as I strike the E. So let's practice this. I'm on D and E, F, E. That's the one. So the little thing that's happening is as I let go of D with finger one, that's when it gets pulled in and positions itself on F. Kind of hard to see, maybe make that box a bit bigger. So I'm on, on D with one, and as I play E, I'm pulling the, pulling the thumb underneath. So just by the sheer amount of annotation, annotating, you can kind of see how much is going on in the right hand of that first measure. And if I now go, of course, I've lost all my beautiful position annotations. It's almost like I wish there was a layer for my position annotating. And if I put that in, I don't want it to go away. But when I imagine all these start and stop in lines, I kind of want them to be on a different layer so I can remove them easily. Anyway, going back to, let's use yet another line, maybe that. All right, so on D, I'm going to have that position, uh, stopping at the uh, green line. And before it, I have what? Two. So yet another <laughs> position change. That's what I mean about how busy this right hand really is. As I play the D with finger one, and stopping at the green line. I want that position to change. C sharp finger two, I'm playing the D with one and then doing that. Also, I'm still holding the triad in the left hand. So I've got the C sharp down, I've got the triad down and I'm doing this. 
hand. I'm releasing the triad in the left hand. I'm repositioning my right hand. So every little moment in this first measure needs to be practiced, it seems. Luckily, first note, D, triad, Notice, by the way, I'm already shifting my thumb inside the keyboard. I'm not playing here, just so I'm used to this idea of playing the thumb inside the keys. So in the end, when we had that you know, C-sharp chord, we were not doing that, right? So I'm already kind of playing the left hand further inside the key. All right, so as I'm going to that first position change on the second D, of that measure, both the adjustment in the right hand and letting go of the chord in the left. Right, and, and so if you can master every single red box, every single segment, you should be able to play it without any uh, stuttering on this line. But if you don't, there is a chance that it'll be kind of like Right, where you kind of get into the position and realize, oh, I'm not in position. Have to move the fingers, so that takes some time, and so that gets in the way of that 16th note rhythm. And so, in position is easy to play. As I said, don't practice those bits like most of green and cyan highlighted measures. Once you're in position, don't practice that part. And you know, most of the yellow highlight measure you're done but then at the end of that measure huge leap beginning of this line as you can see lots and lots of little position adjustments so i would just practice them in isolation until the hand ballet is taking place so I, I would stop this video here because it kind of gives you the sense of pretty much the rest of the piece it's all the same stuff just using different notes different chords uh, looking down yeah, I haven't really changed anything as far as the current fingers and um, yeah, it's, it's a piece that just needs to be practiced a little bit for its various quirks, but otherwise pretty straightforward as far as what needs to be done. All right, enjoy.